Hey gang, Greg Howe here, S9 Radio, and today we're going to be having an intimate look and listen to Turner's most popular amplified communications microphones. Greg Howe, S9 Radio. And I've got to admit, I was on the fence in regards to whether or not I should do a video on Turner's more popular vintage amplified microphones until seeing a few reviews, with the common complaint being the lack of any compression circuitry in the sideband-oriented super sidekick microphone. And I don't know what these guys were talking about, and apparently they don't know either, as you do not want compression circuitry in a microphone being utilized for sideband application. And with that, some of this video is going to be a crash course in Turner's microphone electronics. And you'll also get a better idea of why Turner did a complete and total 180 in regards to the design of the Super Sidekick using no compression circuitry and opting to go with a more natural sounding moving coil dynamic microphone element as opposed to the ceramic piezoelectric elements found in all their other existing amplified microphone designs. Okay, here's Turner's first mobile amplified hand mic. This is the M plus two. I've got the mic gain relatively low, about a two. I'm going to go ahead and bring the mic gain up to about a four. Uh, this microphone does use a ceramic piezoelectric uh, type of element. Uh, they're very sharp, articulate. I'm now bringing the mic gain up to about half throttle. That's about a number five. Once again, this is Turner's earliest mobile hand mic, amplified mic, uh, the blue and uh, gray M plus two. And now I'll go ahead and uh, open it up. Uh, that's about a number seven. That sounds pretty good. Okay, once again, Again, that's the Turner M plus 2U. It's a two transistor mobile amplified hand mic with a piezoelectric ceramic element. And here's Turner's plus two transistorized desk mic. I'm bringing the mic in up to a two. There's a three, and that's about a four on a scale of ten. And I've actually seen three different versions of this microphone, with the earliest being a plus two transistorized desk mic, and then I've seen two variants of the SSB plus two transistorized desk mic. However, all three versions run Turner's very sharp and articulate piezoelectric ceramic microphone element, with the earliest versions actually have Having the preamplification circuit board mounted right to the back of the microphone element, with the latter versions running a slightly larger circuit board that slid up inside the neck of the microphone. And this larger circuit board allowed Turner engineers to run larger capacitors that yielded nicer tonal qualities with better low frequency response. And that is the version of the SSB Plus 2 I'm talking to you on right now, the late model. Now let's run the mic gain up a bit. I'm at 10 o'clock, bringing it up to a 11 o'clock. There's 12 o'clock. I'm about five inches from the microphone, by the way. There's one o'clock. There's two o'clock. There's three o'clock, four o'clock, and full blast. Five o'clock. I'm going to go ahead and back it back down to 11 o'clock. And as you can see, uh, this SSB plus two transistorized desk mic, like all of the plus two transistorized desk mics, have no shortage of communications audio punch. Once again, this is the SSB plus two late version of the transistorized Turner desk mic running the very sharp and articulate ceramic piezoelectric microphone element. So let's have a quick look at Turner's simplistic yet very effective microphone compression circuitry and what it does. Well, first off, it allows the operator to run the mic gain up to a much higher level than one could run a basic 
preamplifier design. This brings the low level audio up to a much more intelligible level, all without the fear of overmodulation. Thanks to this microphone element shunting transistor, and here's how it works. We've got the microphone element that feeds the first amplification stage. That audio signal is further amplified in the second audio amplification stage, and once again sent to the third audio amplification stage where it's even further amplified, hence the plus three name. However, the radio's microphone audio is pulled from the second audio amplification stage, and this third audio amplification stage is basically a driver transistor for this shunt transistor. And how this works is the audio signal from the stage three is fed to the base of this transistor. As this transistor gets tickled with a little voltage, it turns on. Now notice one side of this transistor is tied to ground. So as it turns on, it feeds a slight ground signal to the positive of the microphone element, basically pulling its signal down, regulating its output, which regulates the overall level of the microphone preamplifier circuitry. Simple, but very effective. Here's the Turner Plus 3 mobile hand mic. It is a compressor type of mic. It does run a piezoelectric ceramic type of element, very sharp, articulate. I've got the mic gain up to about a number four. I'm now bringing the mic gain up to a number five. Once again, this is the Turner Mobile Plus 3 compressor mic. I've now got the mic gain up to about a six, bringing the mic gain up to a seven. And let's go full blast. Now I'm going to turn it back down. Uh, there's about an eight. There's a seven. Yeah, there's a six. That probably sounds pretty good. Once again, this is a Turner Mobile Plus 3 hand mic with the piezoelectric ceramic element. Okay, here is the Turner Plus 3 desk mic. This is a compressor mic. This mic does run the ceramic piezoelectric type of element, which can be very sharp and tinny. I've got the mic gain set at about two. I'm bringing it up to about a number three. There's a number four. Number four on the plus three compressor mic. Uh, there's about five. I'm about four inches from the microphone. And there's about six. Uh, number six, number seven, number eight. There's full blast. Now I'll bring it back down to about a six, a number five, and a number four. Once again, that's the Turner Plus Three desk mic. The Super Sidekick was a huge engineering departure in regards to Turner's prior amplified microphone designs, with sideband performance being the primary focus, and also the first time that Turner moved away from their famous piezoelectric ceramic type element common to all their existing amplified microphones and opting to go with a more natural sounding, higher output, dynamic element requiring an impedance matching transformer to make these low impedance elements compatible with the high impedance semiconductor amplification circuits. And here's another first for Turner and the Super Sidekick microphone, the implementation of an integrated circuit, this one being designed by Motorola for use as an audio amplifier in small transistor radios. There's little doubt in my mind the reason the engineers at Turner chose to go with this chip as it has an extremely low current drain, excellent harmonic distortion specs, and an extremely robust quarter watt of audio output. That's enough audio output to drive just about any transmitter to the moon and back. That is a heck of a lot of audio output for a preamp microphone, my friends. As you can see, these Turner Super Sidekicks have some serious audio punch. Yeah, try that with another communications microphone. Now, because of the extremely high output potential of this Motorola chip, Turner has actually employed two microphone gain controls. You've got the user adjustable gain control on the top of the microphone, and then you've also got this internal microphone gain control here. Here is the Turner Super Sidekick desk mic. It's a one transistor, six transistor integrated circuit microphone capable of a quarter watt of audio output. Has a lot of punch. Um, as mentioned, this is a rather interesting departure for Turner as all of their previous amplified mics utilized a ceramic 
dynamic piezoelectric, a very sharp, articulate element, whereas this uh, microphone has the more natural sounding, a dynamic microphone element, more pleasing for sideband, more natural sounding. And now I'm bringing the mic gain up to about a number five. That's a mic gain up to a number five on the Turner Super Sidekick. Now bringing the mic gain up to a six, and I'm sure I'm starting to distort and overdrive this radio, so I won't go much higher. But anyways, once again, this is the Super Sidekick desk mic from Turner. Now let's do a side-by-side -side comparison of all of Turner's vintage amplified communications microphones. And to kick it off, here's the M Plus 2 Amplified Mobile Hand Mic and the M Plus 3 Mobile Amplified Hand Mic with compression circuitry. The SSB Plus 2 Transistorized Desk Mic, the late model with the larger capacitors. And the Plus 3 Amplified Desk Mic with compression circuitry. And then Turner's Audio Monster, I'll back the gain down. The Super Sidekick Microphone. Well, as they say on Looney Tunes, that's all, folks. And I hope you enjoyed this review and comparison test of Turner's vintage amplified microphones. And in closing, consider this. The engineers at Estatic, now I'm not bashing them, designed their preamp circuitry back in 1961, and they utilized that same exact preamp design up until closing their doors in 2001. On the flip side, the engineers at Turner were busy beavers. They could not leave well enough alone. They were making changes within existing models and were constantly on the cutting edge of communications, microphone technology. You really got to give the gang at Turner a pat on the back. And with that, I'm going to say 73, Greg, S9 Radio.